As the country reopens more fully from the pandemic, there's one group of Americans who may not see the full benefits of getting the vaccine and its protections. Immunocompromised and immunosuppressed people who aren't able to produce antibodies even after being fully vaccinated. So how are they navigating reopenings and what can be done to protect them from the virus? Here's ABC's Ariel Reshef with this week's Vaccine Watch. Like most Americans, Maria Hoffman is eager to get back to pre-pandemic life. I've got friends that I want to see that I haven't seen just like everybody else, haven't seen in a long time. But like roughly 3% of Americans, Maria is immunocompromised. For people like Maria, their immune systems don't work like everyone else's, less able to defend the body against infections, either because of a specific disease that impacts the immune system or medications that suppress it. I don't look like I had a kidney transplant. If you walked walked by me down the street, you're never going to know. Maria is fully vaccinated, but because she is immunocompromised, that's not a sure protection against COVID-19. There's no guarantee of how long the antibodies from the vaccine are going to work for me. Researchers say that antibodies aren't the only indicator of levels of protection, as other parts of the immune system are also defending the body against infection. Think of antibodies as the tip of the immunologic iceberg, right? Antibodies are above the surface. We can measure them. But below the surface, there's a tremendous amount happening with B cell immunity, T cell immunity, and then trying to correlate all of that with protective immunity. But people that are immunocompromised or immunosuppressed live at a higher risk for infection than most. The issue isn't just that they're more, more vulnerable to COVID-19, they can be more vulnerable to any infection. And if your immune system is compromised, not only are you more susceptible to getting infected, but you may be more susceptible to having a more severe infection. Today, the pandemic is still far from over. Worldwide, there are nearly 7,000 deaths a day and over 10,000 new cases reported in the U.S. daily. But with over 65% of U.S. adults with at least one vaccine shot, 46 states have felt comfortable lifting their mask mandates and fully reopening, leaving some, like Maria, feeling left behind. It's nerve-wracking, to be honest with you, because how can I guarantee that I go into a building and, the whole, and everybody's been vaccinated? Researchers today are working to learn more about these vulnerable populations, but the studies are still in the early stages and too small for any definitive answers. This has been very very painful for us to go through with our patients, many of whom were waiting with bated breath to get their vaccine so they could have their child go back to school or so that they could hug their grandchild. And then getting this news that you didn't have antibodies um, was sort of devastating to them. The COVID-19 vaccines have been tested heavily and are safe to use for the general population. But vaccines available in the U.S. have had little to no testing in immunocompromised individuals, something Dr. Spira and other researchers wanted to address early on. There was very little data about how patients with autoimmune diseases might fare with the vaccine. These researchers wanted to bridge that gap, testing how well vaccines worked among immunosuppressed people and suggesting that some types of medication seem to interfere with normal antibody response. They say more research is needed. The most important studies are going to be the large, large, large studies, which are going to look at forgetting what antibodies say, what's happening, are these patients getting infected or not? Early data also suggests that some patients had more trouble than others developing antibodies. After a full two-dose series, only 50% of transplant patients would have any antibody at all. And that's in contrast to 100% of people with healthy immune systems. And even the 50% of transplant patients who get an antibody response don't have the same high levels of antibodies that people with healthy immune systems have. But there has been good news. In a study published this month involving 30 transplant patients, many of those that had poor responses to the normal amount of COVID vaccine doses improved their antibody response after a third dose. Either they will need additional doses, higher doses, some modification to their immunosuppression during dosing, or there may be some people who we just cannot get a good immune response with any of these approaches. The CDC and FDA are not recommending extra doses of the vaccine for anyone, but they say the vaccines are safe for immunocompromised people. 
I think the main takeaway point from this study is hope for immunosuppressed patients that we will ultimately be able to figure out how to get a good immune response. And experts say that if you're immunocompromised, the best thing you can do is get vaccinated because some protection is better than none. Researchers hope that further study will bring answers and an increased sense of safety for vulnerable communities. It just takes longer to understand the immune response in people with compromised immune systems versus what we already know about the immune response in people with healthy immune systems. Though there's no timetable for those answers yet, they can't come soon enough. You still need to act like the person standing next to you has something you know that you don't know about. For ABC News, I'm Ariel Reshef, tracking the vaccines. Our thanks to Ariel for bringing us that. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.